it's Sandy from By the Lakeside. I did not expect to pick up my camera and film today. It is almost 5 p.m. and it's getting dark already. But I've been doing some knitting and thought I would share a little bit of my knitting projects with you. I've had a few questions about my bigger projects and how I am progressing with them. And I've had a lot of knitting on my mind because the weather is cooler although today is an exception. We're having very strange weather here. It was, I think, 18 degrees Celsius today. My windows are open, but I am thinking ahead. I'm getting really excited. I have so much dream knitting that I have on my mind, and I thought I would just do a quick little knitting vlog for you guys today. I have had a pretty productive day, which feels really nice. It is Sunday and I've had kind of a rough week. I'm sure a lot of us have. Um, even though I'm in Canada, it's just been a really um, long week. I'll just leave it at that. But I've also been kind of overwhelmed with all of the things again. It's just been one of those times where everything is built up I want to do a million and one things and I think I can do them all in one day and I've been really tired. So this morning I woke up with a new attitude. I jumped on the treadmill, which I hate, but it immediately made me feel better and I've just been really productive ever since. I've got meatballs and sauce in the crock pot and I don't really have to worry much about dinner. We're just going to have spaghetti and meatballs. So that is taken care of, thank goodness, because as soon as I finish filming this, I am going to sit on the couch and pull up my knitting. I'm enjoying my coffee and it's starting to get dark, so I better share my knitting with you guys. So I really wanted to share the progress that I've been making on these two projects. These are sort of the two main ones I've been focusing on and I'm really excited to finish. This is the one I've been working on mostly in the last week or two. I've made a lot of progress finally. It is the Felix sweater. And you know, I can never remember who the pattern maker of this one is or the pattern designer. Um, I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember, but I'm really loving this knit. It is a beautiful yarn. It is Joe Sharp Silk Erin Tweed. The color is licorice which is a black and it has these beautiful neps or the tweed kind of flecks of gray. And there's even a few little purpley bits in some of it. I'm really enjoying it and I think it's going to make a really wearable and comfortable sweater. This is a beautiful pattern. It is very simple, but stylish. I don't know if you can see here. It has this gorgeous eyelet detailing at the raglan armholes and i'm not sure about you guys but i kind of classify or separate my sweater knitting into three parts just mentally the first part is the yoke until you separate for the sleeves the second part is the body and the third part are the sleeves and depending on the pattern but actually most patterns for me, I think part one takes me the longest. It's super exciting to start it, especially if there's color work that kind of helps, but I kind of, I kind of lose steam around here. And this part from here to the underarm took me forever. I just stalled. I lost interest. It's been you know, sitting in a bag lonely for a really long time. And I finally just told myself winter's coming, get to the sleeve separation and get onto the body. And once I did that, it has flown by. The um, underarms to where I am now, I could start doing the rib, but I think I want to add about an inch to the, the body. I think here is... Um, the recommended possible place that you could start ribbing. So I wanted to add an inch and a half on that. So I think tonight I might actually get to the ribbing, just make it a little bit longer for me. Um, so I'm hoping it's not gonna be much longer. I have even put it into one of my new bags because I just wanted to refresh the project. And um, this is one of the fabrics that I will have in the next shop update 
which has been so delayed because I had a problem with getting my linings, but they finally came in and um, I'm working on these this week. I'm actually hoping to have a large project update, project bag update at the end of this week. So you can be on the lookout for that. So this is what I'm working on right now and really, really enjoying it. So, and I know a lot of people don't like sleeves, but I don't mind them. So I'm looking forward to that part. The other project I've been spending a lot of time on is Kate's poncho. It's a pattern by the ladies from Nice and Knit, and I'm also using their beautiful yarn. The color of this yarn is, I believe it's called Autumn, and it is one of my most favorite yarn colors ever. It's absolutely stunning. I decided a while ago that this project needed to be finished, and so I've been working on it diligently. I just put it down to make some progress on my Felix sweater, but I'm sort of toggling between these two, and now that my sweater is almost done, I'm probably gonna finish that and then um, continue this one. I feel like I'm almost there. I think I'm on my last ball of yarn. I just joined, um, I think it takes three, and it's actually quite big. It's just really bunched up on the needles right now, but I'm really looking forward to wearing this one, and I've made a little bit of progress since the last time. So I did make a modification to the neckline here because the original pattern has this beautiful kind of flouncy neckline, a lot more, um, a lot more fabric and drapiness. But I saw that Katie from Nice and Knit had done a version that had this simple mock neck. So I remember messaging her and asking um, how she did it. I can't remember now, but I really, really like the modification for me. Um, I think I want to wear this one just kind of around the house. I don't like to keep my house super warm in the winter, but I do like layers. So I think this one will be really nice, um, a really nice cozy piece. So I'm hoping that the next time that you guys see either of these projects, they will be off the needles, they will be complete, and I may even be wearing one. Let's hope. Other than that, I have been working on some socks, um, the socks that I shared in the last couple of videos, and uh, unfortunately I had to rip one back a ton. So let's grab those. I'm going to go find them. I apologize for the lighting. It is really dark now, but this is the sock project that I've been loving and I was making a lot of progress on, but as you can see, um, not so great. So this is the Legacy Fiber Arts Cozy Toes sock yarn. It is absolutely gorgeous. The color is Woodland Shenanigans, and this is a mini from Chelsea Lux Yarns. I think it was from the advent calendar. It's a beautiful color. So I was working away on my beautiful shorty vanilla sock. I had done the heel flap. I think I had even done a little bit more on the length of this. And I got to the heel turn and I finished the heel turn. And then I noticed in the middle of a row, right in the center of everything, was a tiny little hole. I'm not exactly sure why that happens. I know I did something when I was knitting. It wasn't unraveling. It's just one of those things where, I don't know if I twisted a stitch. I'm not quite sure, but there was a hole. It would have been fine to leave it alone. It was underneath the heel. So I kind of thought, I'll just leave it. And I went, I continued, and I started doing the gusset. And I've done gussets before. I know what I'm doing. I even have the instructions nearby to double check. But it was late and I was in bed and it was kind of dark too. And I don't know where my mind was, but instead of decreasing only on the, what is it? The first, the first and the third needle and just knitting across the second needle. I was decreasing on the first, second, and third, and I kind of felt like something was wrong, but I kept going, and it was late, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a mess. So I thought I will rip back to my heel flap. 
and then just redo the the heel turn as well and so in the midst of that though everything just kind of started ripping back farther and farther and farther until I finally just put my needle into the leg of the sock because I couldn't handle it anymore. I kept losing stitches. I think I've been um, knitting really tight and so it was really hard to pick up the stitches. So I'm kind of back to what you see here, which is a little bit of a drag, but it's okay. I started knitting again. I am going to start the heel soon. I'm leaving this one in my workspace because if I get a chance to take a little break, I will just knit a few rows and start the heel in here. So that's where I'm at with my sock. So that's where I am with this sock. I have Christmas socks on my brain. I am really excited about those. I think I shared a bit about my Advent socks in one of my previous videos. Oh, and in my last video, which was the In the Kitchen video where I did um, a few nights of dinners in our house. I got so many amazing comments and wonderful feedback. I just wanted to say thank you so much. It was a lot of work because it was just a new format for me and I had to figure out, you know, how to film everything while I was cooking. And I was a little nervous putting it out there, but all of the comments were just so appreciated and, um, they just made me so happy. So I, I'm really glad that you guys liked it. I will probably do another one of those in the future. And um, I just wanted to say thank you because you guys are the best. So back to some knitting so I can get down and make some dinner. I have this basket in here that I have a whole bunch of Christmas yarns, including this project, which I think I showed a while ago. It is a beautiful yarn from the Cozy Knitter. Um, this is Gingerbread House and I love it, but I was crazy and thought that I would do the, um, the afterthought heel, which now I'm kind of scared to do, but we'll just put that aside. So I've got that Christmas sock. I also have a coloring book yarns. I think this is a vintage, vintage holiday magenta. It's a really fun color. Um, I also snagged one of these before she stopped selling them. Jinx Yarns, so beautiful. This is called, what was this one called again? I forget what it's called, but this was one of her Christmas colorways. So pretty. And one of my favorites, which I still have not cast on, is from Bumblebee Acres. This one is called Gingerbread House as well, and I love it. I really want to cast this one on, and I kept this because I thought that would be super fun for heels and toes. And I think that's it for my um, Christmas yarns, yeah. So I've got all these Christmas yarns that I'm thinking about if I miraculously finish all this other stuff that I'm planning on finishing. And I have another basket to show you. I think that when I show you this, you might start to understand the madness of my mind and why I constantly want to cast on something new and beautiful because I keep all of these potential projects at the ready. So this basket here is kind of my hat basket. It's yarns that I have acquired in the last year or maybe two they are gorgeous, they are beautiful, they must be knit because they are too beautiful to tuck away in a cubby and be forgotten as these one-off skeins. So this is kind of my hat basket and I think I got this idea from Christina at Chelsea Yarns because even though I haven't been to her store or the store that she previously owned, um, she had a table and it was like, it was a hat it was hat central, so you could pick out these gorgeous yarns and see, uh, pick out a pom-pom to match, and I, I thought that was brilliant, so I kind of made a basket. So you can see they are in here. It's already getting a little bit too full, but like, for example, that has to be a hat. I've got a few pom-poms in here that were gifts, and like this green one, 
that has to be a hat. Am I right? Has to. So this one too. And if there's a shawl pattern and I need something from here, then I could potentially take it. But I mean, come on. These are meant to be hats. I do have um, a mitten kitten here um, from Viola Yarns. I was like stumbling to, to think for a moment. And I've also got these Piri Yarns to make a Brooklyn Tweed hat pattern. I've got um, two combinations that my friend Meg totally inspired me with. So hats, hats, hats. And as I put some of these away, you can see I've already got a couple pulled out for berets because yeah, I can knit three berets. Who am I kidding? But I saw my friend Cherie from the Ollie and Bella podcast. I love her podcast. If you do not watch it, you totally should. Uh, she was wearing this hat, which is called Salut Cherie. And I thought that would be beautiful. So I've pulled it out to consider it. This was from last year, um, the Rhinebeck colorway from Chelsea Lux Yarns. Then, of course, Christina just released her Chelsea in Paris beret, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I have one of her kits. This one is the On Chapel Hill, so I thought that would be really fun. And I also had purchased this last year to do double-stranded mohair, which sounds like a nightmare if you ask me, but the project was beautiful. I can't remember the name of the beret, but I know um, that I saw it on um, Marilisa's podcast, which is Girl Meets Yarn. And this is the Blue Sky Fibers Brushed Surrey. And you hold two strands and you knit a beret. So these are potential berets, potential winter hats. And so... Just to get an idea of how I organize my stash, I keep all of my fingering weight up here. And I have separated those Christmas um, Christmas yarns that I've put in a separate basket. But these four cubbies are kind of my basics for different weights. So the first cubby is Sport and DK. The one below that is um, Aran weight. This one up here is worsted. This one down here, well, mostly down here is chunky. And then here I have a little, um, a bit of overlap of things I couldn't fit. So I've got some thicker Aran yarns and I've got some um, spin cycle yarn in there as well. But I end up accumulating these baskets of really beautiful yarns. So in here, I have yarns that are potential sweaters that I have purchased with sweaters in mind. This is a yarn I got from Viola many years ago and it's destined to be a snowbound. I think, is it called snowbound? No, the Hollows shawl. I got this beautiful kit that I would love to put in to um, a penguono one day. This is knit collage. So as you can see, this is why I want to cast on all the things because there's so much dream knitting in my head. This is going to be my half and half triangle shawl from the Pearl Soho, but I've been really good. I'm not casting that on yet. This was um, the hipster shawl. I bought this for, um, I've got three of them in there by Hohi Locatelli, and I've got um, some other beautiful yarns for projects that I've had in mind. And I've even got project bags up there that one project I haven't started yet, but it is ready to go as soon as I finish one of my current ones and some other ones that I can pick up and finish. But this is kind of the problem in why I can't focus on one project and finish anything because when it does take me a really long time, I get bored. And so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but it is nice to um, be able to finish projects too. So I'm pretty sure that during Vlogmas, I will be dipping into this hat basket 
and I will probably cast on a beret. I'm not sure which one yet, but these are the options and this is the madness. So it's super dark now. I'm going to go put a pot of water on to boil to make our pasta to go with the meatballs. I'm going to sit down on the couch and do some knitting tonight. I hope you enjoyed this little knitting recap and I hope you guys are doing really well. I'm not sure if I will be doing another video in the next little while because I have a lot of bags to finish up for the shop update later this week. And then I am jumping right into some Christmas bags. So lots of sewing in the next few weeks. If you don't see me again soon, then the next time might be Vlogmas. So take care and I'll talk to you soon.